people who are into Ponzi schemes don't mind paying themselves low wages. What they like to do is siphon off as much money as they can into brown paper bags that other people don't know about at all. That is well above the median uh, amount, and, and um, I'm sure that they have mortgages to pay and things like that um, in San Diego, which is quite expensive. I think if you wanted to run a company, and this is just me as an outsider, I can I can dispassionately um, take the moral high ground because I have no skin in the game, so I'm just like armchair quarterbacking this thing. So that's that's really not fair to do, but. If you wanted to run a startup company and show that as a founder you're really invested in it, I think you would take like the bare minimum that you need to survive. Now, I'm sure that Steve and Chris are not wealthy. They need a salary. They need money to survive. Um, do they need two hundred fifty thousand dollars? You know, probably not. They could, I'm, I'm sure they could. You could scrape by for less. Um, you know, you could probably. You, I'm sure you can survive in San Diego even for a hundred thousand dollars or a little over hundred thousand dollars. I mean, you're not going to live well. You're going to drive a crappy car. You're probably going to live in a small house, and you're not going to go out much. Um, uh, but then that would show all your investors that you are completely committed to this thing. Um, like if. Um, if the company succeeds, you're going to do very well financially because as a founder, you have lots of stock um, and equity in the um, in the company and you're putting your sweat equity in the thing. But if it fails, then you've basically been scraping by, barely surviving for the for the many years that um, the, the company has been running. And you've, you've basically got a lot of skin in the game. If you're, if you're paying yourself a comfortable salary, then if if the, if the company goes south, then, you know, you, you don't get your money out. You don't, your equity in the company is not worth anything. But, you know, you've had several years of a comfortable living and, um, you know, you had fun running a company with your idea. Um, so there is, there is some, there is some, there's some thought process to how much you, uh, you, you pay yourselves as founders. I think, um, I, I'm not super familiar with this, but what these guys are doing here, Omani, they're paying themselves $900,000 a year. That is, that does seem like to me that they're fleecing their, um, their investors. Like you have crowdfunders that are, you're just taking their money and just, just pumping it straight into your bank account. This is not like you're living comfortably. You know, you're, you know, without, you're not like struggling to live. Um, I think, I think, um, Steve and Chris have paid themselves a salary that allows them to live um, comfortably. And by comfortably, I don't mean extravagantly or luxuriously. I mean, like, they're not having to worry about whether they can make their, you know, mortgage payments and they're not worrying about, like, like whether they can buy food at the grocery store, that kind of stuff. I think if they were paying themselves $100,000 a year or a little over $100,000 a year, I think it would be a struggle. Like, it would be a struggle to live in San Diego on that salary. It would be a real struggle. And um, and that's that's tough. And it would be a sacrifice. But these guys, it's not living comfortably. They are just literally taking investors' money and just pumping it straight into their bank accounts. They're paying themselves $900,000 a year. That is crazy. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't believe that. And then they, uh, most investors paid 80 cents a share, but then they let his wife acquire 2 million shares um, for $27,000, which is just a penny a share or something. Wow. I'm going to have to sort of fast forward him talking because that was an extremely long waffle on what was really irrelevant. I just can't believe how he just waffles on. I can't believe that this guy is supposed to be some sort of an educator because he has no sense in how to educate. But what I got out of that was that he's shifting the blame. He's going, oh, I've got this other one that I can show is doing the wrong thing. That will excuse that terror. I don't buy that at all. And now we're into this part. Now, I'll tell you something. I have not even seen this video, and I'm making the comments because I just want to run through it quickly. Normally, I watch a video through completely first so that I've got an idea of what's coming ahead, but not this time. That's why I say this one's a bit rough. In any case, and now he's looking at what this boxable CEO's wife has been able to acquire. 1.9 million shares for $27,000. I would just say, well, if we're going to go comparing again, let's look at what Aptera did. They have something like 4.5 million shares between three of them. 4.5 million, not 1.9. And they got them for a fraction of a penny a share. They wouldn't have paid anywhere near $27,000 in total between the three of them. But I'm not going to look at the figures. Make the comparison yourself. It just seems that Aptera has done worse in this instance. Um, offered a limited number of shares at one penny. Now, see, this is the kind of stuff that I thought maybe the Wall Street Journal was going to say about Aptera, is that they were doing this kind of stuff, like letting their family member buy Aptera stock at like one penny per share. But there's none of that. Um, so I think this article was pretty... I'll just say... Part of my pure logic is that he says, I think the Wall Street Journal should have said this about Aptera, and there's none of that. That doesn't mean that Aptera didn't do it. Just because the Wall Street Journal gave Boxable as the example doesn't mean that Aptera didn't do it. But to gullible people, when somebody says, oh, there was none of that, that in their mind just says, oh, so they didn't do it. No, it just means the Wall Street Journal didn't say it. 
think a bit past your nose, you know, see further than what first enters your head when somebody says something. Think a bit harder. Boxable came out looking real bad in this in this article, and I think they deserve to look bad because look at this this the salary is crazy, and and you're selling shares to their wife for one uh, percent of what they're um, selling it to their crowdfunding their supporters. That's just that is a scam. That is um that is immoral. Uh, but Aptera is I think they're doing it right. I mean, um, you can second guess how much they're paying um, the founders. Uh, you can get second guess many of their decisions, but they have intent to build. They're doing something difficult. There is some timeline slippage, but they're making progress and they're they're being transparent about it and. Um, and actually, Aptera today uh, came out with um, a statement. And this statement is clearly a response to the Wall Street Journal. Um, so there he is, transferring the blame to Boxable, and then for no evidential reason, saying that Aptera is doing it right. We don't know that they are. They're just doing it differently as far as we know. But let's look at the facts. They have had, in this round, part two, I mean, not part one of Aptera, but this time around, they have taken something like $120 million. They have a rented factory. They have very few assets in it. And they have five fake prototypes that are poorly built and don't contain half of what they promised to sell on the fake prototypes. $120 million. We really need to have some experts take a look at what they have spent thus far and see that it can be accounted for properly, doing proper accounting measures to see where $120 million has gone. And I'll remind people that the Cretan has a lot of skin in the game himself. He's promoting things because he makes money out of promoting it. I just recently watched his latest video, and somebody made some comment to the tune of them just now announcing Reg B shares at $14 something a share, a rise from the normal $10.50 that it's been for a while, and asking the question, how is it that they can do this? They've put in something to the SEC to say that they want to sell $15 million worth of these, when it's only nine days until the end of crowdfunding as far as they've been announcing. There's something fishy going on here as well. I don't know much about it, but by all means, research it. And remember, these people take cryptocurrency they want people to put their retirement superannuation directly into investing in Aptera. These people just don't seem to have the ethics in many different ways. Article, And it basically says that they are proud to utilize crowdfunding. Um, and, and what they say is, you know, for a long time, startups had to go to venture capital. And venture capital basically would determine who, who succeeds and who doesn't succeed. Yeah, so unlike traditional fundraising where large venture capital firms and basically hold control over company decisions and missions, crowdfunding empowers the world to choose which visionary project come to market. And I think that is, um, this crowdfunding is definitely a threat to traditional VCs. And I think in many ways they don't like that. And and there, there's definitely some downsides to crowdfunding. There is a chance that people think that this is a way to make money and they think, oh, this, this, this company has a product that sounds great and I'm going to put my money into it and, and do well. And in all likelihood, you're not. You're, 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 statistically, you're going to lose all your money um, crowdfunding these startups. And this is where he's still agreeing while he disagrees. And right now, he's actually just gone completely off the Wall Street Journal article. How can you debunk an article when you've left it? And this response, it's not really a response. They didn't say it was a response. He's only thinking it's a response. Call it a response. This response is just snake oil again. The way it's worded, it's snake oil. Empowering the world, that's snake oil. Visionary projects, that's snake oil. They know their potential customers are as thick as thieves and they know how to twist their words to keep them convinced in what is a vaporware product. Well, that's all for me. Bye for now. Stay safe.